Yo, yo, what is up my people? Welcome back to another freaking video. There's nothing here because the Supra is now in the front. So in today's video, we're gonna be working on the Supra once more. I do have some stuff that I do still need to take care of before I can make any major progress on the car. So I have some intercooler piping that I actually need to take over to a shop and get a IAT sensor bung welded into. So if you don't know what IAT stands for, it's intake air temperature. I'm gonna have a shop weld in the bung for the IAT sensor into the intercooler piping just before the throttle body. So I need to grab that, take it over to them, have them weld it, and that's gonna be basically how we're gonna start off this video. But there's some other stuff that I still need to get done. One of those things is the power steering lines. So these power steering lines right here, I need to figure out what to do. And they definitely, definitely need some cleaning. I have a new power steering line, which is actually gonna be this guy, that is getting replaced. And I do have the new part already inside. So that's gonna be coming off completely, but everything else needs to get cleaned because I'm sending this to go get powder coated as well as the rest of the intercooler piping. So. With that being said, let's get straight into this video. First things first, just before we do anything, I do want to just clean this up just a little bit before I drop it off at the shop because I want to be a little courteous, you know, not freaking just give it like all dirt and stuff. I already kind of wiped it down just a little bit, but there's still some stuff. I need to get off these clamps as well as the actual coupler itself and then uh, clean off the inside just a little bit and then we'll be all set to go. Now we're all good to go. She's all nice and clean. Time to take it over to the shop and ask them if they can weld a bung into it so that we can fit the IAT sensor. And in case you guys are wondering what exactly I'm talking about. All right, so we remove the plastic off the engine real quick. So you can see, obviously, there's a huge wiring mess. And this is all just plug and play, so it's all good to go. But I started mocking up some of the sensors on here. And one of the sensors that we have is IAT. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, that stands for intake air temperature. And so basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna measure what the intake air temperature is that's going into the throttle body. Now, something that would have been nice that I had, if I would have done, is weld it to the actual throttle body. But the issue with that is, well, I already painted this and I don't wanna go back and repaint it. So the next best option would be to put it on the intercooler piping. I figured it'd probably be a little bit more accessible too, because you know, back here it's like, you know, once it's actually on the engine, I have to get around the intercooler piping, blah, blah. It's gonna be a little bit harder, but with this, at least it'll be welded. So this is the actual bung itself right here. This is actually what I'm gonna take for them to weld in. And it's literally just gonna go right there. So they'll probably just drill a hole, weld it in, and then once I put on the piping, fitting will probably go here, it'll go there. And then once that's on, the actual sensor itself can just plug in right here. And I'll just probably figure out a way to go ahead and weld, or not weld, what am I saying? Once this is all connected, I will go and figure out a way to kind of just tuck this away so that it's barely seen. But yeah, that's where it'll plug in. And the sensor will go in pretty much till about there because the actual bung We'll sit it all the way down so that the sensor is barely visible and it'll it'll be sticking out just a little bit, but it's not gonna be a huge, huge amount. Ideally, I would have, or I should have done it on the throttle body because these are the same people that welded the custom throttle body that I'm taking it to. I could have done that, but intercooler piping will do for now. So I'm not really tripping off of it. All right, so I have arrived here at the shop and it is like 10 minutes before they are about to close. But as I mentioned, I am just here to ask them if they are willing to do the job. I'm not expecting it to get done today or honestly within the next couple of days because I don't really need it for now. But I just came 
and thought I would ask them if they'd be willing to do it. They've done some work for me in the past. So we're just gonna head inside, see if they'll be okay with me recording. And hopefully they can get this job done for me. And you know, we got one step closer to my goal. So knock, knock. What's up guys? All right guys, so um, we're here at Race Factory on uh, Winchester in Campbell. So you can see there's some pretty cool cars here. Some R32s. This is Josh and Evan. And uh, you guys are working on a car right now? Yeah, got a sound system for this. Oh, okay, sweet. Here. So I just had a quick question for both of you guys. So I have this intercooler piping and I have an IAT sensor that I need like to obviously be able to plug in. I have this little bung. I was wondering if you guys would be willing to, you know, just weld it in there. This is gonna be the top where the throttle body goes. Yeah, like either on the side or below, whichever. Anywhere close to the throttle body. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, ideally, right, I, it would have been better if I did it on the throttle body that you guys modified, but I didn't have the uh, IT sensor or the bung at the time, so this will this will do. Yeah, it'll it'll work with what I got, so. Cool, sounds good. Okay, sweet. All right, y'all, just like that, Race Factory has the intercooler piping. They have the bung. They're going to weld it in. Evan and Josh, super dope, and they said I'll have it by tomorrow. So, simple as that. You guys need any welding and you guys are in the bay area definitely come and check out race factory here on winchester boulevard i believe here in campbell i will link their website and their instagram down in the description so check them out all right oh the bunny's out that's thumper ladies and gentlemen hi thumper thumper come back thumper all right anyway let me move on so that is the new power steering line right there obviously power steering pump reservoir this is the old line that we were replacing did i need to replace it i don't know probably not but i wanted to anyway because it's disgusting and the other little piece is yeah the bracket so that obviously is going onto the block but everything else is getting replaced i think the only other thing that i do need to salvage is going to be this hard line and this hard line should be fine. All I need is like new little crush washers for it. And we should be chilling. Don't mind all of this mess. If you guys are curious as to what this is, this has everything that has to do with the ABS on the system of this freaking car. Ridiculous. So that is no longer gonna be needed. That's out of here. Kaboom, see you later. So anyway, new power steering hose. And I need to get these little brackets off unless I just decide not to run them, but I'll probably run them Just take them out. I'll go clean them or something But in the meantime, we're just gonna take all this apart and I've already, already taken pictures and videos of all of it Remember to do that when you're working on cars take as many pictures and as many videos as you can Because putting it back together is gonna be the biggest pain in the butt. It's just it's very difficult especially when you forget and you never want to forget but it does happen so just take as many videos and as many pictures as you can and make it work so this is how they do the crush washers it has like a little bracket, I guess, that holds it all the way through. It's kind of weird. I think the new one has that same exact setup though. Scratch that, it does not. They're just normal crush washers on the other one. Don't know why Toyota designed it this way, but they did, so. So as you can see here, I had mine attached to a little oil cooler. So I'm gonna be removing this guy and then I'll probably be reattaching it, reusing it later. It's still in really good condition. I'll probably just clean it up a little bit. So these are probably gonna be, not probably, they have the grooves on them. So I'm gonna have to cut these off.
now she's off. The power steering pump is off. Time to clean her up. Make sure she's all dried out on the inside and then we're all good to go. So far, this is what we got. Just cleaned up a little bit. Obviously, I'm gonna make sure that, you know, there's no water or soap inside this once it's all done. And I'm gonna make sure that everything actually works properly. Might even end up just rebuilding it, to be honest. In the meantime, I just wanna get this thing all cleaned up, looking better than what it would, or what it was. That way we can get it on the engine and it'll look really good. All right, you guys, so it is officially the next day. I just ended up putting the camera down because I wanted to actually focus on what I was doing. So. Anyway, I'm going to show you guys what I was able to get done, what I was able to accomplish, and how everything looks now. So, as you guys can see here, this is the 2JZ, and obviously, first things first is we got a very nice Titans Motorsport pulley on there. So, that is a pretty cool feature given that all of my other pulleys are also Titan Motorsports, including the one for the alternator. So, you know, it's a nice little touch, it keeps everything nice and clean, but as you can see, it is all mounted up, so we are all set and nice to go. The mounting points for the pump to the bracket are actually right here. So there's one bolt right there and another bolt right there. And that's literally all that holds the actual pump itself into the power steering bracket. The bracket though, however, is held into or onto the block by this huge long rod, as you can see here, connected by one bolt. So right there, that connects to the back of the bracket, and then it connects to the block on the 2JZ, and to this little guy right up here. So that guy, that one bolt also, is what holds the whole bracket and power steering pump onto the block. And as you can see, it's very nicely placed. There's this huge hole missing right here, and that's just because that's for AC, but I'm not running AC because, well, I don't really care for it. So the only other thing that I had a very, very long time trying to figure out how it was mounted and how it was placed was the actual hard line for the power steering pump. So this is actually the hard line that goes from the pump down all the way to the actual rack. And as you can see here, it actually does have some mounting points for the bottom of the oil pan. There is one bracket right here and that bolts into the bottom of the oil pan and then there's one right here. So those came off of the old bracket that I had. If you guys have a power steering and you guys are planning to change out whether it be the lines or the power steering pump or whatever it is, make sure that you guys save those brackets because well, there's really no other way to mount this thing. When it, the brackets weren't on, the line was just flopping everywhere. So make sure you guys have that and everything's all set to go. So as you can see, we've made quite a bit of progress on the 2JZ. Everything is finally nice and bolted up on the front end. There are two other things that still need to get done and that is the oil cooler. And I still need to put all the O-rings on that. And also the one huge coolant pipe that goes all the way around with the gaskets. And I do need to modify this guy just a little bit and send it to get powder coated because I want it to look nice and pretty just because and some other little minor details here and there 
I sent my intercooler piping to actually get the bung welded in as I had mentioned earlier so that is actually officially done and I will be installing that once obviously everything's in the car and get the wiring harness all set up there's still tons of stuff that we need to get done there's still tons of things that will be shown on the channel so make sure you guys continue to tune in with the videos if you guys have any questions or any concerns make sure to drop a comment down below let me know what you guys would like to see what I'm doing right how excited you guys are it means a lot to me when you guys comment drop a like and subscribe so with that being said we will catch you guys out in the next video when we are working on the 2jz once again remember to stay up stay tuned and peace out y'all till next time